God of War 2 starts up several years after the original chapter, which was launched in 2018. The Fimble Winter winds have arrived in Midgard, making Kratos, Atreus, and Mimur's survival in the Norse wilds much more difficult than before. Here are some of the things that fans are eager to see in the sequel. What fans are expecting. The PS5 showcase event was well received by the gaming community just as fans thought the showcase had reached its end, Sony had other plans. With snow engulfing the screen, the screen went black, and Christopher Judge's voice as Kratos took center stage. You must prepare yourself, Kratos says, almost as if speaking to the audience, as Bear McCreary's renowned soundtrack begins to play in the background. The God of War 2 trailer finishes with the foreboding statement, Ragnarok is coming. This was fantastic news for God of War fans as there wasn't much of a hiatus between the two games. Ragnarok was hinted at in the second half of 2018's God of War, when Fimblewamter's blizzard blanketed the regions of Midgard. Let's now move on to a list of what fans are looking forward to in the sequel, Freya on the Warpath. Alluding to the fury she's about to inflict on Kratos and his son Atreus for slaying her son Baldur at the conclusion of God of War, Freya is one of the most prominent characters throughout the new God of War saga and will be a strong opponent. Sadly, Freya has been cursed by Odin, so therefore she can't hurt a sentient creature. According to the game's backstory, Freya could strike a contract with Odin in order to exact vengeance on Kratos, going up against Freya, who was a powerful ally of Kratos and Atreus during their adventure will be incredibly challenging for gamers and Kratos. One of the things people are most excited about in God of War Ragnarok is the emotional and dramatic battle against Freya. Resolution on Loki and the World Serpent Kratos and Atreus find at the end of their adventures that Freya, Atreus' mother and Kratos' wife, is a giant who guided them both across Midgard to Jotunheim. The artwork on the wall that prophesied size future events was one of the strangest sights Kratos and the players discovered, in which Kratos perished in the embrace of his son, with Juntungardr, the world serpent, also playing a role. The players, as well as Atreus, learned that among the giants, his name was to be Loki. This is a great surprise towards the end of the game, as fans are familiar with the Norse mythology figure. According to mythology, Jogrmungardr is Loki's son. As a result, fans are eager to learn more about the mural's importance and how it fits into the narrative. More bosses like Valkyrie. The bonus boss battles against the Valkyries were one of the most enjoyable and demanding aspects of God of War. These battles proved to be the God of War's most challenging part. The conflicts pushed players to their limits, forcing them to embrace the game's in-depth fighting and use every weapon at their disposal. Even if all the Valkyrie have been rescued and restored to Valhalla, there's still some room for strong bosses. Lovers of God of War will undoubtedly welcome a new group of monsters who provide the same ludicrous degree of difficulty. These boss battles demonstrate the game's combat richness and depth. More gods. For the most part, the God of War franchise has been known for its insane boss fights. The 2018 revamp, a more realistic approach, seemed preferable, but fans may welcome the comeback of the large-scale boss battles of olden times. There are many outstanding heroes and gods in Norse mythology that may pose a serious challenge to Kratos and Atreus. With Mag Agni, Modi, and Baldur already dead, Kratos appears to have gotten off to a sluggish but steady start. But Kratos appears to be much more grown up and would prefer to avoid confrontation if he could. Despite his best attempts, Kratos frequently finds himself taking the lives of mighty gods. Kratos vs. Thor in a boss battle Fans were stunned when, towards the conclusion of 2018's God of War, the God of Thunder appeared at Kratos' door, armed with Mjolnir. This foreshadows a large and epic boss battle battle against Thor. Thor is a figure that fans are familiar with, although in the Marvel and MCU versions, it's a long way from the North mythology picture of Thor, which appears to be what the game is aiming for. Thor will be a very strong rival who will most likely be introduced as a boss battle and provide some genuinely epic moments. The conflict 
between the god of thunder and the god of war may go down in gaming history as the most cataclysmic conflict ever. With an absolute masterpiece versus Baldor in the opening minutes of God of War, Santa Monica has proven that they know how to craft a spectacular boss battle. Questions fans are hoping this sequel will answer. The God of War franchise is noted for its imaginative reinterpretations of characters like Loki, Athena, Zeus, and Thor's adventures, which are based on actual legends from Greek and Norse mythology. The newest God of War edition is set to chronicle the story of Ragnarok, a Norse mythology epic battle centered on cataclysmic events, and fans are eager to see how it will play out in the upcoming game. While God of War provided key hints that helped players obtain a better understanding of the game's narrative, some of the most pressing concerns remain unresolved. How does Ragnarok start? Looking back on the events of God of War in 2018, it's clear that the game is hinting at the start of Ragnarok. In the last boss battle with Baldor, Atreus, who is actually Loki, the god of mischief, finds the antagonist's lone weakness, mistletoe, by mistake. This occurrence is similar to a Norse mythology account in which Loki persuades the blind deity Hodor to kill Baldor with a mistletoe branch. The gods are terrified since it has been predicted that Baldor's death will usher in Ragnarok. Rock. The game's conclusion also alluded to the onset of Fimble Winter, a three-year period in Mildgard marked by severe snow and blizzards. Would God of War Ragnarok begin around the conclusion of Fimble Winter, as per Norse mythology, when Ragnarok is intended to occur, or will it start somewhere in the middle leading up to Ragnarok's events? We'll simply have to wait and see what happens. Will Atreus be three years older? Fimble Winter is coming to an end according to the hidden finale of 2018's God of War. Despite the fact that three years have passed, Atreus appears to be the same, but that might not be the case in the following game. It is likely that fans will encounter an aged version of Atreus if the happenings of Ragnarok take place at the conclusion of Fimble Winter. If that's the scenario, we may not only have a new appearance, but also new abilities and unlocked talents in the God of War games. If the God of Mischief is made a selectable character in the future sequel, a much more grown-up version of him might offer more more fascinating features to the gameplay. How did Faye die? Faye's death is the focus of God of War's initial few seconds. Faye, who plays Atreus' mother and Kratos' second wife, is a character that fans don't learn much about till the latter part of the game. The fact that Faye was a giant is finally disclosed, making Atreus a half-god, half-giant kid. Players will see indicators in the guise of yellow hands all the way up to Jotunheim, starting with the tree that Kratos cuts down. It transpires that these are Faye's handprints, implying that she's been to and from Jotunheim. Does this imply that she took part in the battle that slayed all the giants? Could this have also resulted in her death? Fans will hopefully gain a better understanding of Faye's death in God of War Ragnarok, as well as how her death will affect her child's life. How will Freya rain down every agony? After Kratos saves Freya's life by killing Baldor, she becomes enraged, which fans will likely witness in God of War Ragnarok. In one of the game's most terrifying sequences, she violently turns to Kratos and declares that she will pour down every misery and every violation possible onto him. Freya has the capacity to be one of God of War's coolest antagonists, and it appears that's where her arc is headed. The former queen of the Valkyries was a fearsome fighter until Odin cursed her, preventing her from ever leaving Midgard and robbing her of her wings. Fans are curious to see if she can break free in the sequel as part of Odin's curse that she cannot hurt any living creature for the rest of her life. Will Kratos be worthy of Mjolnir? If players wait for the hidden ending, they'll find out that Kratos will very certainly face Thor in Ragnarok. The Thunder God appears outside the protagonist's house in the cutscene, presumably demanding vengeance for what Kratos and Atreus did to his sons, Magni and Modi. Because he wields Mjolnir, Thor's trademark weapon, fans realize it's undeniably him. Of course, the more more pressing question is whether Kratos has done enough to earn the right to wield the hammer. Before the players find out, he'll almost certainly have to face the Thunder God. We bet it's going to be one of the most exciting moments in the entire franchise. Thanks for sticking around till the end of the video.